I'm Iman, I'm one of the medical students working with Dr. Yusuf. I'm here to talk to you guys about a controversial new treatment for depression, such as ketamine. Ketamine, that's ketamine for uh, depression. So we'll start off with ketamine and as ketamine. So normally what happens with the dosing, uh, we'll start with that. So there's three forms with ketamine, how you can administer it, IV, oral, or intranasal. IV, typically what they want to do is 0.5 milligrams per kilogram. That's pretty much the max that you want to give, usually. And then what they do is that you want to use it over 40 minutes. And that's when they saw the best efficacy. If the patient doesn't respond to that 0.5 milligrams per kilograms, they can bump it up to 0.75 or 1 milligrams per kilograms. And then if they're obese, uh, most people think you should give them more. But in reality, you should go for the ideal weight instead of the actual weight because it might be too much and you don't want to give a patient too much ketamine because it can lead to a lot of adverse effects. Um, with oral, you stick to one milligram per kilogram and the intranasal at this point only comes at one dose, which is a 15 micrograms. The S-ketamine is only intranasal. It's only intranasal, there's no IV form for it. So there's two ways of giving it. Um, if you're doing it for treatment resistant depression, what they re typically recommend is that the patient gets 56 milligram or micrograms on day one. And then if you're gonna do a subsequent dosing, you can choose between 56 or 84, depending on how the patient tolerates the medication. If you wanna do it for suicidal ideation, then they typically start with 84, and then you can give them 56 if they're tolerating the medication well. So then the efficacy of the medication, if you wanna use it for unilateral depression, typically what they saw is, when they have a treatment resistant depression, the symptoms actually improve really rapidly with ketamine and S-ketamine. It actually works really well. Most people get a single trial infusion. And what they've seen is that if they get long-term treatment, that the effects of ketamine actually diminishes after two weeks. And what they've actually seen is that patients that have a more intense depressive state at baseline, they respond better to uh, ketamine treatment. And then what they've also seen is that patients that take an SSRI or any other antidepressant, when they use ketamine with it, instead of waiting that six to eight weeks to see efficacy, they actually see efficacy approve quicker, or come quicker. So it's something that I look into as well. And then when you look at it for our suicidal ideation, this one is actually really interesting because when a patient's suicidal, given ketamine or S-ketamine, what they've seen is that a single infusion mitigates the symptoms of within hours. So that could be something that could really be beneficial in an acute hospital setting when a patient comes in suicidal, giving them ketamine, they can be less suicidal within an hour and then you can start long-term treatment. And then the thing is, is that it can help symptoms, mitigate symptoms in an hour, but there's no long-term uh, treatment with ketamine that we've seen. So it's not unclear at this point if it's actually a long-term treatment, if we can just keep giving the patient ketamine to see if that prevents them having suicidal ideation. But we do know that it can mitigate symptoms within an hour. And then when you talk about the long-term efficacy, the issue is there's no, there's not enough data yet to determine if there's a use for it because most trials, the patients are short-term and most of them don't go to that long-term phase. So it's something that we have to look into before we can even consider doing it. And a big reason why long-term efficacy is not really seen right now is because of the concerns of tolerance. What they see is that, uh, Patients actually with a decreased efficacy after two weeks, that you're gonna to have to probably increase dosing. And if you increase dosing, that can lead to a lot of problems, especially with a medication like ketamine. And they can develop ketamine uh, dependence. On the, and then um, the frequency. So how much do you give patients these medications? With ketamine, it's unclear. They're not really sure. They're still trial and error, trying to see what's the best dosing for it. With S-ketamine, what they saw is that if a patient has a treatment-resistant depression, they follow this kind of typical regimen where they'll get, for the first four weeks, they'll get twice per week nasal injections or sprays. And then from weeks five to eight, they'll get it once a week. And then thereafter, they'll give them either once a week or once every two weeks, whichever one the patient is tolerating, and then they'll see how it works long-term. And if the patient's suicidal, they kind of follow a similar pattern they just want to do it twice per week for four weeks and then see how the patient's tolerating it and then adjust from there. So now the biggest concern with ketamine and S-ketamine is the adverse effects. So 
it is pretty safe for the most part. Like any side effects that they, they have at the moment, they resolve pretty spontaneously. But then there are long-term side effects that we don't worry about. So it can lead to hypertension. There's some cases of hypotension as well. Anxiety, tachycardia, blurred vision, dizziness, headache, nausea, vomiting. So something you gotta worry about. But the, the worst thing that people want to be aware of is the dependence. Because these medications are highly addictive, when you give them long-term use of it, the patient can get highly addicted. And then what they can also lead to is neurotoxicity, bladder toxicity, and hepatotoxicity. So those are something that you have to keep in mind and use uh, a pro versus con and see what is best for the patient. And that's pretty much what we need to know about ketamine and S-ketamine.